Okay, welcome back to Vermont House Judiciary Committee. We are continuing our discussion on H145, and we do have a new draft, um, 4.1. Uh, Bryn, if you could please do a sort of quick walkthrough and show us the, um, the changes, uh, that would be helpful. Thank you. Sure. So for the record, Bryn Hare from Legislative Council. Does everybody have 4.1 on, on in front of them or no need to share my screen then? Okay. So um, the changes to this version from the last version that you looked at, 3.1, you can find in section one, if you scroll down to page uh, two, halfway down the page, is subsection B, and these are the use of force standards. And we've moved the language that was formerly in B4 up to B1. And what, what I actually did is I swapped the order of B4 and B1. So what was formerly in B1 is now in B4, and what was formerly in B4 is now in B1. So we start out with that language that you have um, been looking at so closely over the last few weeks, the standard by which law enforcement conduct will be evaluated. And then following that is the requirement that law enforcement only use force objectively reasonable, necessary, and proportional. <clears throat> and then if you scroll down to page three, subdivisions three and four are that kind of broad stroke language um, about the authority of law enforcement to use force is a serious responsibility that should be exercised judiciously and decision by um, the officer to use force shall be evaluated carefully and thoroughly. And then if you scroll down some more, you get to subdivision B5, which is the um, directive to you for law enforcement to use information that they know um, that the conduct of the subject is um, due to some type of impairment or condition. And then the remaining subdivisions are, are in the same order. Um, the self-defense language in subsection six and the duty to intervene um, in subdivision seven if an officer uh, observes another officer using a chokehold. And then subdivision C is the use of deadly force standards. These haven't changed at all. <clears throat> That's all the same. So um, the only other change that was made is to correct the cross references um, that exist elsewhere in the bill. Okay, and then thank you and then 3.1 though had. Right, yep, and I can talk about, we didn't never got to the difference between 3.1 and 2.1, and that you can find on page seven, which is the justifiable homicide statute. <clears throat> so we put this in to this bill because we needed to change the cross-reference after you added um, the provision in the use of deadly force section about the officer use of a chokehold. So we had to correct the cross references here. So you can see at the bottom of page seven is, um, the, is the provision that uh, law enforcement who use force or deadly force in compliance with the standards um, are, are uh, guiltless if they kill or wound another person. I'm, I'm sorry, that's on 4.1? Yep, four, so page page seven of draft 4.1, yep. section four is the justifiable homicide statute. Got it, okay. Yeah, and that, that didn't appear in draft 2.1 because um, what you did in, with draft 2.1 was to add that uh, language about chokeholds, the provision about chokeholds and the use of deadly force portion of the standards. Um, specifically that uh, law enforcement shall not use a chokehold unless deadly force is justified. And so because you added that provision, um, unless deadly force is justified, we changed the justifiable homicide statute to include that subdivision 
as a part of the um, as a as one of the cross references in in justifiable homicide. So that's why it appeared in draft 3.1, and it also appears here in draft 4.1 because you, you you still got that provision that says law enforcement shall not use a chokehold unless justified. Thank you. Thank you, Bryn. Questions for, for Bryn? Tom. Thank you. So, so Bryn, say a, a situation where a uh, chokehold is used, um, uh, in, would, wouldn't it, would it be potentially that an officer, uh, you said something about being found guiltless, but wouldn't there be quite a process between the incident and uh, when they are found guiltless? Um, not necessarily. I think you heard testimony from uh, the prosecutors that because this justifiable homicide statute exists, they may choose not to charge a person um, if based on their analysis of the use of force, it fell within the standards. Yep, okay, great, thank you. And, and one other question. Um, so you, you moved four to one and then one to four up above? Correct. So uh, just curious, because my, my thought process was that you're just going to move four up to one and renumber everything. Did you do it that way so you, you didn't have to renumber everything? <laughs> I did it that way, so I had to correct fewer cross-references. And also, if you look at that page, I think it's page seven, is that right? Oh no, it's page um, four. Page two, two. If two. you if you scroll back to page two and you look at um, the provision in B two, it makes sense for for. Are you there? Yep. It makes sense for that language in B two to follow B one in my perspective because it provides that law enforcement. It's another. It's it's sort of the general um, standard by which law enforcement has to conduct themselves. They can only use the force objectively reasonable, necessary, and proportional to affect an arrest. So it makes sense that that would follow um, the reasonableness analysis in B1. Okay. I did, it, I did it that way really for two reasons. Yeah, great. Thank you. Else. Uh, Jen, I don't know if you were in a you in a position to uh, to respond to this, or do you need a little bit of time? No, um, I can uh, say that we feel this is an improvement over uh, 3.1. I will say candidly that I had not seen the language in justifiable homicide. I, at a quick glance, I looked at it and it looks fine, but um, the version 4.1 that we just walked back through is definitely an improvement and we would support it if the goal is for it to leave this committee today. Uh, but as the commissioner said, it does not mean that we would not necessarily um, ask for other minor tweaks along the way. But I, I really do appreciate the work of this committee and I feel this is much clearer. And thank you, Representative Donnelly. I, sometimes you're too close to something to see how simple something can be. Uh, so I really appreciate this restructuring. I think it makes a lot of sense. Great. Well, yes, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Kate. I know it's really, really helpful. Well, thank you, Jen. That's, I appreciate that. And, and because we have this crossover deadline, um, we do need to, to vote on this to, to move it today. So, okay, Tom, your hand is down. Any, anybody else, any other, any other questions? But it, it nope. Okay, um, I do realize it's the lunch hour, but I just want to, um, if we can if we can continue with this and wrap it up, um, that would be, uh, that would be great. Um, hold on, I just see that getting, I want to check a text from, from uh, Barbara, who has an appointment. So actually I'm, let me take a break for just to make sure that um, I can respond to Barbara. So just, we don't have to go off YouTube or anything. Okay, so thank you. Everybody's juggling meetings and being in a number of different places. So certainly appreciate it.
everybody uh, trying to be here as, as much as they can. So, okay. So I um, I think we're in a, in a great place. I think this 4.1 is certainly a good good balance of the testimony and the concerns that we that we heard. But I do want to open up um, for discussion now uh, before we before we vote. Um, Selena. So much. Um, I have a I have a proposal for the committee, and I have a sense that um, I'm probably really in the minority on this. But it felt important to just have the discussion and kind of go on the record um, with where I'm at. So I think we've done really good work in this bill to clarify things. I've really appreciated the testimony on all sides um, in support of the bill. Um, and I continue to struggle a bit with one provision and that I'm just looking at what I hope is the right version of the bill um, on page five in the section on, so I'm looking at 4.1 again still, um, on page five in section on use of deadly force, um, subsection B, I think it's B six. Um, lines 14 through 16. So this is the this is the mm -hmm. language that clarifies that a chokehold can be used um, pursuant to uh, you know the, the that a chokehold can be used um, under the deadly force standards um, pursuant to subdivisions one through four of the subsection. And um, I believe that. Um, you know, I really understand the reasons for wanting to clarify this. And um, I also think this is already true under current law. And I'm concerned a little bit and have been concerned just seeing some of the reactions to our discussion a couple weeks back that it gives the impression that we're actually walking something back here that where I saw, I've already seen folks refer to this bill as the chokehold chokehold loophole bill at times, um, which I just want to state really clearly, I don't think is true and don't think this is the intent of the bill. I think that this, what's um, outlined in this language is already is already quite true and quite possible under the current law. And I understand that um, the intention here is to make that ever more clear for all parties and can see the value in that. And at the same time, I really, really worry about the message that this provision sends and that um, it may be signaling to folks um, that we're walking something back, that we're stepping back from the commitment we made last year around this issue. Um, so I recognize that I'm probably an outlier here, but I would make a motion that we um, strike that provision from the bill prior to passage. Okay, uh, Martin. Yeah, um, I understand uh, uh, that that you're raising, uh, Selena. However, I definitely uh, uh, oppose uh, oppose this uh, motion. So, I think what we're doing with the chokeholds uh, provisions of this uh, bill, uh, there's a few, th there's a couple main points that I, I would wanna make. First of all, it, it's the transparency. And uh, I tried to do this a little bit last year, but it just didn't work out that I, I don't wanna have uh, provisions in our law that are not as clear as can be. And I don't wanna hide, no, I'm not, it's not really hiding behind, but, but the, the fact is that yes, and yes, in fact, chokeholds can be used in, in a situation where there's a life and death struggle, where deadly force uh, is justified under, I think, the current law, even if we don't pass this. But it's not transparent. Uh, one has to kind of go through kind of a convoluted process to get there uh, by looking at a whole different area of law in the justifiable homicide, as opposed to embedded in our use of deadly force standards. I think what we're doing with this is making it much more transparent that in these very limited circumstances, a uh, chokehold is an appropriate maneuver for law enforcement. 
Uh, related to that is, is the clarity. And, and we heard from law enforcement. Uh, I've heard from various, uh, uh, not, not just from DPS, but we've heard from law enforcement that it's not clear. It's not clear enough that we're not telling law enforcement to use their firearm instead of a chokehold if a chokehold is something that may be a better, uh, a better action. So, so it's kind of interesting. I, I just want to, I've looked at some other laws uh, uh, dealing with chokeholds and um, whether they're, how transparent or clear they are. And, and I think that, that we're taking a great step of really being transparent because I think some other laws are not quite as transparent or clear that chokeholds are in fact uh, used so, or can be used. So just for example, the Social Equity Caucus on Wednesday, we heard from Congressman Welch and he was talking about the uh, George, I believe it's called the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, which the House passed and it's been sent over to the Senate. And one of the things that he stated, and, and it's also in, a, in a, a document that talks about the law, that they're banning chokeholds. And yeah, they are, they're banning chokeholds in a non-lethal force situation. Because if you read the, the bill, which I, I, I did read the uh, appropriate parts, the definition of deadly force includes using a firearm uh, or using a chokehold, or you know, they have a whole definition of what a chokehold is, that they define that as deadly force. And we understand that that's deadly force here as well. And then in a provision regarding the standards in this, in this bill, it's not law yet, hopefully it will get there. Uh, it talks about <coughs> the standards for using deadly force, which would include a chokehold in those limited circumstances. So we've also looked to Massachusetts law and Massachusetts law to help us define uh, chokeholds. And the thing with the Massachusetts law, and they may be saying they're banning chokeholds as well, but their definition of chokeholds includes the provision that it's a chokehold if, you, if, you, uh, if the move uh, restricts breathing or blood flow and causes uh, death or serious bodily injury, or there's an intent to do so. And we don't have that. We don't have the intent. We don't have that result. We're saying it's the actual maneuver that counts here. And I think that's very important. We want to make clear that you know, unless deadly force is, is uh, something that's justified, a chokehold absolutely can't be used. Uh, and I think that, that we've really struck the balance here. I think we're being transparent. And I think we're being very consistent uh, with uh, how other states are, are addressing this. So I, I would oppose this. I think it's a very important part of the clarification and transparency that we have in this bill. So thanks. Uh, Will. Thank you. So um, after, uh, in regards to the, the law we, we already passed that this, this bill tweaks, um, you know, I heard from my local police department and, you know, they weren't arguing for, um, doing away with the law. It's like they, they understood that, that some uses of force were going to be regulated and, and minimized and, and done away with it in as many circumstances as possible. And they weren't arguing that. What I heard from my chief of police was just clarity on what is allowed, what isn't allowed. And there was concern that an officer in a life or death situation who employed a chokehold uh, could potentially uh, go to prison, whereas an officer in the same situation who pulled out his fire, their firearm and discharged it uh, would not run afoul of the law. And, and I realize that's not what we passed, but there was a lack of clarity. So, you know, I see this is, is, uh, as has previously been said, I see this as, as just being a clarifying uh, part of, of this change. You know, we passed uh, 133, H133 out of this committee, and it was just approved uh, uh, for third reading on the floor today. And one of the points we made was that it didn't actually change uh, existing policy or practice, it clarified it so that um, judges throughout the system clearly understood what was available, what was at their means. And, and that's what I want this bill to do and that's what I want this provision to do and that's why I wanna keep it in. Because what I wanna make clear to every law enforcement officer from you know one part of the state to the other is that if they are in a situation where their life or another's 
life is in danger and a 20 second chokehold could take care of the problem resulting in much less harm to the person they need to subdue than pulling out a firearm and discharging it. You know, I think that's a good message to get out. I think that's important clarity to have. You know, I think it is a relief for law enforcement officers. And at the end of the day, it, it is also to the benefit of uh, the people that they are interacting with in these situations. So yeah, I certainly um, do not support uh, this amendment. Thank you. Uh, Selena. Um, yeah, I, pre I appreciate that representative not and um, I, you know, I, I have been really um, torn on this provision for the past couple of weeks. And I guess I would just say as a counter to that, um, because I, you know, I, I, I think what you said is, is very logical. And I think there's other people that what we do is sending a message to in addition to law enforcement. And so I worry about the message that this provision sends to folks who have been historically at risk at times in their interactions with um, police in our state and beyond. And that that's just, I just wanna state really clearly that's where I'm coming from on this. All right, yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. And I having this discussion um, puts on the record you know, our, our, our intent. Uh, any, anybody else want to uh, weigh in on this? Um, not seeing any other hands. So, so I appreciate your concern. Oh, Ken, okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Ken. I'm really struggling with this to find the proper balance for law enforcement to do their jobs and to keep all of us safe when needed and also keep it, keeping themselves protected um, so they can protect us. But I feel um, I feel like um, I'm very passionate about this. And uh, I think we've gained, I think we've got a better balance out there for everyone involved. And um, I'm certain, I'm a lot more certain to um, um, I'm in a lot more, uh, I'm in a different place to where I am actually maybe support this. And um, um, and I guess I have the paper right behind me if you want to call the vote and you see exactly what I do. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Tom. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Selena. Um, I, I think you probably know where I'm going to come on this, but so uh, I, I really don't need to say it. But um, w one thing that I'm impressed by is people, whether I agree or not, is people and their principles 
and and uh, and really not just sticking to them, adhering to them, and you know, with with super glue almost. And uh, and and I like that. I, I like that in a person that that has a has a belief, and uh, you know, no matter the circumstances, isn't afraid to bring it up. And, uh, and, and, and I know that, you know, sometimes, you know, situations like this, it's not, it's not easy to do and, uh, and, and, and you're doing it. And, and, uh, I, I, I'm just impressed by that, you know, no matter who it is. And, and uh, and, and I just want to thank you for that. Yeah, I, I agree. I thank you. Appreciate it. Selena and Ken, I'm assuming that your hand is still up um, from last, right? I mean, they hadn't taken it down, but you don't have anything new at this point. Only if you want to, to, only if you want to vote. Right, well, we're getting there. <laughs> um, okay, so, um, so as I was saying, I do appreciate your concern, Selena. Um, I do think we've, we've, um, Taking a lot of testimony, I think um, I, I think we're at a point where we're at a very good balance in this bill um, to move forward. And I do think by having this discussion, we certainly have created the the record and can continue to talk to our our colleagues um, about about this bill and really what our what our intent is and what the bill does and, and doesn't do. Um, and I do think that clarity and transparency is um, is very important. So I am going to ask for a motion that your amendment be treated as unfriendly. And I'm sorry to, <laughs> to, to do that, but um, this is what we do. <laughs> so I was expected. Um, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. right. right. Um, so I, somebody to move and a second. Um, so tell me your. We'll move, okay. Um, second. Okay, Bob with the second. Um, okay, uh, any discussion? So just to be clear on a vote, a vote Thank yes you. means we do not want this amendment. A vote no is that we do want the amendment, just to clarify. Right, right, thank you, I appreciate that, that Martin. So do, okay, great, everybody understands that? Okay. Great. So um, we don't want the amendment. If you don't want the amendment, you vote yes. Okay. If you do want the amendment, you vote no. Because the motion is to treat it as unfriendly. Unfriendly. Yeah. Um, Selena. And to be clear, we're not voting on the bill and the, the language that um, DPS, you know, brought forward and that we sort of went back and forth on that Bryn just brought to us. If, at this point, we're just voting on the motion to remove subsection C. Um, I just want to make it really clear to people what they're voting on. Right, right. Thank right. you. I appreciate that. Right. So we'll we will um, we'll do this amendment, and then we will go to um, to four point one. And so. it's up C six, just to be very very clear. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, Okay, Ken, if you could, if you could call the roll, please. Do we? Uh, this is on Selena's uh, amendment, right? Do, do we need a, a roll call on this, or I, I was expecting just hands, but. Well, I think I think for Selena, maybe just I think you probably prefer to be. I think it'd be good to be on the record. Okay. Think, right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's fine. Okay. So, and I'm, I'm letting Barbara know, but we can go ahead. So against is what? No. <laughs> if you, <laughs> um, if you disagree with Selena's amendment and you want to leave the language in there, then you want to vote yes, that yes, it's unfriendly. Just this, just, just her amendment on taking out that language. Yes is against the amendment. No is for the amendment. Right. <clears throat> Baldwin. Um, no, <laughs> I had to think that through. So, 
Donnelly? Yes. Goslant? Yes. Lalonde? Yes. Leffler? Yes. Norris? Yes. No? Yes. Barbara? Christy? He's coming. Yep. <laughs> Burdick? Yes. Madam Chair? Yes. And we'll hold this? Um, no, I, I think it's okay. Barbara, she's on an, um, she has another meeting and I did let her know that we were voting on the amendment. So I think, um, I think we should move on. Okay, so thank you. So that means the, um, the amendment fails, the language stays in. And so now I would like to vote on draft 4.1. So, so this isn't proof, correct, Bryn? Is that, I just wanna make sure that, that we can. Draft 3.1 was proofed. And because this one just moved some, um, move some language around, I think it's good to go. Great, thank you. So uh, I think Barbara is, yep, here she is. Okay. You want me to go back to the amendment? Um, no, I think that's okay. I think, uh, okay. I think we can move to, um, to 145 to, to draft 4.1, so. <laughs> Thank you for coming back, Barbara. So, um, well, do, yeah, yeah, that's fine. So, okay. Well, I would entertain a motion to support draft 4.1 of 145. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. Any, any discussion? Uh, Madam Chair. Let's yes. <laughs> Uh, my, my, <laughs> sorry, Tom. Uh, <laughs> no, I, sorry, coach. <laughs> my earlier, uh, uh, question, uh, about, you know, additional, uh, conversation actually, uh, with the prosecutors, uh, was actually answered during, uh, attorney, uh, Hare's discussion, uh, because she spoke clearly to guidance offered to judiciary. And so that is good enough for me as far as that conversation. So I just wanted to uh, uh, let you know. Great, thank you, I, I appreciate that. And I also um, see in the chat um, from Jen Morrison that she was in conversation with Wilda White and that, um, I'm just reading it, that, um, that Wilda concern, um, concurs moving before up is agreeable. It's not sure if people saw that. Um, Tom. Yeah, I, I, I just want to thank the committee for you know the the con, uh, the continued and and, uh, and constructive and um, you know a number of other adjectives I guess you could say with the work on this bill, um, and I certainly appreciate the. Um, you know, the, the last minute changes, you know, and, and again, the continued discussion and with this change and, um, and, and I'll certainly be supporting this bill. Great, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate your support. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? No. Oh. okay. Ken, clerk shall commence to call the roll, please. Auburn? Yes. Donnelly? Yes. Go slant. <laughs> I didn't hear your vote. <laughs> because I haven't said it. Uh. 
Yeah. Long. Yes. Leffler. Yes. Norris. Yes. Not. Yes. <clears throat> Rachelson. Yes. Christy. Yes. <laughs> Burdick. Yes. Madam Chair. Yes. Well, thank you, everybody. And Jen, thank you so much. And, and Bryn, I really wasn't sure we'd get to this place. Um, I knew it passed, but having, having a, such a strong vote, I really, really appreciate it. And Martin, I appreciate your, your leadership on this. So thank you, thank you. And uh, Martin, I assume you would like to report it, correct? I'd love to. <laughs> okay, no surprises. Okay, and again, thank you, Selena, and I thank, and I really appreciate your support of the bill in the end. Yeah, like I, as, I really wanted to report it. <laughs> uh, as I said, I, I don't think the inclusion or exclusion of the um, provision changes, you know, current law, and so I'm I'm able to support the bill even with it in there because I think we heard very compelling testimony from Ms. White, the ACLU Vermont and others that um, this really is an improvement on the law that we, as, as well as law enforcement, that this is an improvement on the, on the work we did last year. Great, thank you. Uh, Tom, your hand is up. <laughs> yeah, that figures. <laughs> okay. All right, great. Well, let's take a um, take our lunch break. I forget. Did we say one or one fifteen for Michelle? One. <laughs> yes. Okay. I believe it's one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. Okay. So we'll be back in about half an hour. Thank you, everybody.